Okay. A lot of you may have seen our free vacuum video for this apartment. And we actually went over it with the wet dry first and a straight suction nozzle. Then we went over it with a large sanitaire. And we picked up a ton of like baking powder and uh, glitter, all that sort of thing. Now we're going to go over it with the bonnet and we're going to scrub every square inch of this carpet. And it's going to get all the stains out, but this carpet's about three years old. It was never vacuumed or taken care of at all. And so we're going to have to do a number on it. And the majority of the work is going to be done with the Oric because it scrubs really well and you don't have to put a ton of water down. And then we're going to go over it after that with the rug doctor to, uh, I was going to say evacuate, but to, uh, I was, <laughs> I've lost the word I was trying to, extraction, yes. We're going to go over with the rub doctor and extract everything. Because I even see, even after a thorough vacuum, there's still pieces of glitter. You can catch them in the light here and there. So there's still stuff in here that uh, the bonnet will get some of it out, but the rub doctor will get the rest. And we'll probably end up, because they haven't done any maintenance or anything in here, we'll end up having to do a post vacuum. And that'll be probably in a couple weeks. We're actually trying to clean this carpet. You can, you can start with filming. I'm ready to I've been on camera the whole time. Okay. We're actually going to bonnet clean this carpet. And then we're going to use the extractor just to do a rinse. But this is definitely, we, we do bonnet clean almost every single one of them. And that's how we prefer to clean them. It's the best cleaning method. Yeah, occasionally we only scrub out the stained areas and everything if the carpet's... If it's real clean. Yeah, if the carpet looks like it's really not too bad. This carpet, though, they didn't take care of it. And the uh, company wants to salvage it. So, and there's going to be some problems. There's bleach spots along the wall, you can see. The, be the best method is to bonnet clean thoroughly and then run an extractor over it and do a rinse. That's your number one way of cleaning any carpet. Any carpet cleaner will tell you that pretty much. Most of them will agree with that. We could, if we just want to keep throwing bonnets down, we could clean this thing thoroughly with just bonnets. But it would take a while and we'd have a bunch of bonnets to clean when we're done. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit faster just to go over it one good time and scrub everything really good. And we'll stop and we'll pause on some of the stains and scrub on a little bit better. But if we get all this done, the carpet will be fluffed up again, the fibers will be standing up, and then when we go over the, the extractor, you've opened up the, uh, the pathway to the um, bottom of the carpet so the extractor can actually flush everything out. When we get done, the appearance, the appearance of the carpet is going to be finished. The extractor just makes sure that we didn't leave anything behind it. It'll have the appearance of being completely beautiful when we're done just bonnet cleaning it. That's why we bonnet clean almost every couple we do because you can't beat the appearance of a bonnet cleaner. Now this one we're just going to leave it to dry when we're finished with the rough doctor. We're not going to rake it yet because we're going to have to come up here after maintenance is finished and everything. We're going to have to post back and we'll rake it then. But we're just going to leave it as fluffy as we can get away with so it can uh, air dry. And it's going to be dry by, well right now it's about, let's see, it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be dry before 4. About 3.30? Yeah, 3.30, 4 o'clock. It's going to be dry enough that people can walk on it or do whatever they want to do. We have a spot here where they had a TV stand. And, uh, oh, we'll see if we can get that yeah, out. We'll see, see if, if the we bonnet. Get, we'll get it out with this wagon yeah, steamer. It looks like most of it's coming out with the bonnet. Now, furniture prints, usually you have to steam them out if you want to get them out. We got about 90% of that out, and I'm not done on it. Yeah. We may just get it all out. Although I'll I, walk in. He's doing that. I'll walk in real quick to show you. They had a, looks like they had a water bed, which is against the rules, but you know, that's how people roll around here. <laughs> so we're going to see if we can get a lot of these prints out, just scrubbing them with a bonnet because you just have matted down carpet. But we may have to, we may have to come up and steam that. The steamer will take, the steamer will take uh, the deeper ones. Like there's a good furniture print there. The steamer will take those out within a few seconds, but sometimes the carpet's been crushed to the point it's ruined, and you won't get the you won't get those to stand back up again. Well, if you get the carpet too crushed, you might get the carpet on the top to stand up, but the pad can be crushed perfectly. The pad underneath it can be permanently crushed, and if it is, you're not going to usually steam the pad back up in place. So if the pad gets crushed, it's crushed. But you can still mask the the uh, spot, and people won't really notice it. But there may be a slight recess there, but usually it comes out pretty good. So I think, uh, yeah, there's a bleach spot. They are not concerned with bleach spots at this property, so we don't have to worry about messing around with anything, trying to dye it back or anything. And, uh, now, most people would probably want to get rid of a carpet over bleach spots, but in the rental business, 
it's too expensive to replace carpets every time they get some kind of a stain in them. It's got to get pretty bad. And if the carpet is generally can be salvaged where it looks okay again, and, and now I'm talking about the, uh, uh, the the nap being restored, then you know stains are not as big a deal uh, with rental properties. Some of them, but not with this one. So. The pre spray he used today was Simple Green, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of going back to Simple Green. We had a good uh, good run with Tide, but uh, we're going back to Simple Green because it, it seems like it does real good on the grease and stuff. We've been finding a lot of the carpets lately. And Tide will do it too, but it seems like it's a little faster with the Simple Green. With all these, the thing is, the, the, the challenge is to... Oh, put the pad, the bar. Okay. The, okay. The challenge always is to make sure that you, when you're on your extractor or whatever it may be, that you try to get extract all of the detergent that you use to clean with. You don't want to leave a residue behind. And we have been able to do that successfully with the Rug Doctor, no problem. You got a bad plug? Stop. Put in a different plug in. Okay, we're going to stop. I think we're going to have to switch plugs and see if there's something going on with the work not wanting to spin right now, but we'll fix it and be right back. All right, we switched outlets. Yeah, I think when we get ahead, ahead of maintenance, you have problems where they haven't worked on anything yet. And so, like one thing they don't have up here, they have no water pressure. So if you ever have your order do that, don't panic. Just try a different plug in. And what we did, we just laid it on the side so it's not got any weight on it and get it spinning again. And every once in a while, you can have stuff get caught up in the shaft or something like that. And something it, funny, yeah. Yeah, it may slow down. And what you do is just keep running it and then, uh, you know, it will start running again. Any, any machine, it's the, the Ruck Doctor we've been using that for five years. We've never had any major issues with it at all. But every once in a while you have something where a breaker's blowing all the time and you wonder if it's your machine, but it ends up usually being just a, you know, a, a, a something with that one particular job. And with these machines, what we do is we run them into the ground, but we have another work. So if this breaks in the middle of a job, we just go get the other work and get right back to work. And they're not very expensive, so if you burn one out, you can save it for parts, try to fix it later, and go, if you have a second one, just start up and go again. But we always try to have more than one piece of equipment. We have two orcs, and we can easily get another one. We have three rug doctors, and so, and we have more than one vacuum. It's always a good idea to have a redundancy in case you have a, a fault that you can uh, immediately get back to work with. Well, the good else. thing is, this ain't acted up, and when it goes back to running, it ain't burned out. If, no. it, if it starts working again, it's all right. It's just something funny happened. So, well, and that's one thing our videos, that's one of the reasons we do these videos. We want to show you guys the equipment being used in a real world situation. And we use, we try to stick with brand new equipment and you guys can see, get an idea how long it's going to run. If we take a uh, machine like the Oric Orbiter and after six months we burn it completely out, then you guys will know, well, that's about how long those last. It's still worth the money if you do enough work with them. But, uh, you know, that thing acted pretty funny and we got it going again, so it's no problem. It seems to be fun. And my brother basically quit cleaning this machine long ago, so it's not like we're taking great care of it. We kind of just let it I get clean underneath it a little bit. But no, you don't. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I'm just I mean, I, I wipe up underneath it, but there's not much cleaning to them, actually. See here, I don't think the pad driver's on 100%. Yeah, this particular work, he has a little trouble getting the pad driver mounted on there evenly and it'll wobble real bad you'll know when you don't have it right the other work orbiter we've got it just slides right on no problem so they are a little bit different well, when you got it sitting there the machine's going up and down like that the patch driver's on even yeah you can see the head on that is pretty smooth if it was wobbling back and forth a, then a you lot, have an issue then your driver's not on properly right anyway all right, I think he's going to rinse the bonnet out real good and clean yeah, it. Yeah, I got to rinse it after this room. And with the pressure they have up here, it's going to be it's going to take a while. But we're going to um, go ahead and pre-spray the hull 
and then we're going to get the bedroom and when he gets that bonnet ready to go we're going to do that we're going to do it in the closets off camera basically but we'll see if we can get this stuff here out just the prints yeah look at those bad bleach stains yeah that's awful but we're going to rinse our bonnet proof the pre spray down and we'll be back for you it's just going to be a second but for us it's going to be an eternity all right we've pre sprayed he's already done the hallway he did inside the closets behind the door that sort of thing because those are kind of boring to watch when he's doing that maneuvering so now we're just going to do the main part of the carpet there we go we got one little stain over here it looks like a pet stain but those usually come right out you can just scrub them Yeah, they looks like they had an illegal pet. It looks like they had an illegal water bed. Both those things were against the rules. Pets you can have with a $500 deposit. Water beds are completely illegal, but you know, you know how it is with rental properties. Uh, people kind of just do what they yeah, want to do. Sure they do what they want. Yeah. And they consider any rules for an apartment complex to be just merely suggestions, and they promptly ignore them. <laughs> so. Yeah, we can't explain why someone went around for bleach everywhere, but I think they were probably trying to clean up, maybe they were trying to clean up pet messes and thought the bleach would sanitize it. But. And we've actually got some carpet samples of the carpets they use here at home, at home, and we've actually poured bleach, straight bleach on some of our carpet scraps. And uh, we were doing that because we were going to test to see about dyeing the, the bleach out. And the bleach stains never appear uh, using straight bleach or 50-50. And so, you know, when you get bleach on your carpet accidentally, it doesn't always necessarily mean you're going to end up with a carpet that's bleached out like that. If you get it wiped up pretty quick, and if you go and saturate it with water, work on it a little bit, it's probably not going to cause an issue. And we have those carpet scraps and the bleach is still sitting on them, and they still haven't changed color. So I can't explain that how some carpet doesn't bleach. It must be the carpet protection or something that's doing something for it. But after the bleach is completely dried, there's still a residue in it. But on the samples we tried to, to uh, bleach out, we had no success at all. I'm gonna put the bottom real quick, just to finish off the room. Stain, the uh, prints from the bed are lightened quite a bit. And they will come out with a stinger if this don't get it. No, normally they'll come out. What we'll probably do is run over it a couple extra times. Here in just a second. Okay. Yeah, because we want to get, we don't want to use the, the rug doctor is going to get more water into the carpet. And we want to try to get those prints out if we can. Now the, the black carpet brush that comes to this might do it too. Yeah, the black carpet brush it's pretty, brush will it, dig it, in. It's pretty good. We didn't bring it up here though. No, we don't have it. We didn't know we needed it, so. And the truth is, we like the black carpet brush, but we generally don't use it a lot because the bonnet is faster. Yeah, the bonnet's a little quicker and it, it, it scrubs harder. And it absorbs. Yeah, and it, and it also absorbs things a little bit. And the bonnets for these things actually, and I'm talking about the Oric bonnets, uh, and I'll put a link in the video notes so you can find the ones I'm talking about. But they're about the least expensive bonnets you can get and they, they work really well for what we do. Now there's, you can get cotton bonnets or wool bonnets and they are more absorbent. Uh, but we're not that concerned with getting a lot of absorption because we go These over actually absorb a lot. I just, you can buy more expensive bonnets, but we just never seem to need them because this, these work real well. No, he's going to he's going to work on the uh, imprints for just a few a minute. minutes. I'm going to show you in here. We have the rug doctor all filled up and ready to go. I'll tell you one thing. I love the rug doctor is a great machine, but I do wish it had a 50 foot cord on it. Uh, like the orc does because when you're doing a three bedroom apartment or something like that you're constantly having to find uh, a plug-in that's uh, closer and in some of these apartments the plug-ins are all worn out and so you're you know you have to find good plug-ins and that could be a challenge that, that, that prints basically out there's a little bit here but 
We'll get it out later with the steamer. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, I did a good job of scrubbing. And we're going to go over all this with the extractor. That's going to be... I don't know if we'll put these videos together at the same time or just completely separate them. But uh, you might keep your eye open for that because it's going to be riveting. And basically he's done with that. So rub doctor next. Thanks for watching.